Hello and welcome back to the channel. Just like clockwork, two weeks after beta 2 we have iPadOS 26 beta 3 and there is not a ton for new changes but there is a bit of controversy about one of them so let's just dive right into them. So let's start with the updated wallpaper. So the default wallpaper to this point has only had the one color configuration, variation, whatever you want to call it. Now if you come into the wallpaper picker, this is really laggy with the screen recording, which is interesting. You will see here in the iPad OS row, we have a few different color choices, although these three look similar-ish. This purple one is obviously very different. It's a nice little bit of variety that we normally get from the default wallpaper, so it was kind of weird that we only had that one for so long for these first two betas. This next change is something I have been wanting since the very first beta. So we got that nice new cursor in iPadOS 26, which of course is more traditionally designed where it's a little pointer, but I personally find it to be a bit on the small side. Especially when you move it to something like an external display, like the studio display, you can lose your cursor. They have solved that in just the way you would think they would, and that's by bringing the shake to enlarge gesture from macOS to iPadOS. So if I just shake vigorously, I guess, on the trackpad here, you can see the mouse keeps getting bigger, and I can find it. Not hugely important on the iPad display itself, but again, when you get to an external display, it actually is necessary. I mean, they could also make the cursor bigger too. That would also work, but this is good. This is a good change. So what's causing a bit of a kerfuffle on social media are the changes to the design. And to be clear, nothing's really changed so much about the design itself, but it's more about how liquid glass has been applied across the OS. So from beta one, from even before beta one, people have been complaining. The glass effect makes it hard to read text based on what's behind it. And so Apple has responded in beta three and made things a little less glassy, but to be clear, you still get that liquid glass effect in my opinion. So we'll do some comparisons here. I'm gonna do my best here. Got my iPad mini still on beta two and the iPad pro here on beta one. I'm gonna start, let's go into podcasts here. Let's take this full screen. So hopefully this is a little easier to do a comparison. Unfortunately, uh, my recommendations are weirdly different between the two devices, but you'll get the idea. So at the bottom here, we've got the now playing bar. And you can see in the iPad mini, you go around the text realm where it says ask to upgrade. It is a little bit harder to read than on beta three, on the iPad pro where it says connoisseurship, which I guess is a word, it's news to me. So that's one example of the improvements. If you look at the top here on the floating tab bar, you can see here how hard this actually is to read on beta two in the iPad mini when this uh, when there's darker content behind it. Let's see if I can reproduce this on the iPad pro. Again, it's really annoying. My recommendations aren't the same. Okay, and you can kind of get an idea here. You can see this is getting a little less opaque, a little frostier people are saying, I guess, but just a little bit easier to read than it is here, even if, on the iPad mini on beta two, the effect is a little bit cooler in my opinion. Let's look at the music app next. You can see content behind the now playing bar on, on the beta two, a little bit harder to read. Content behind the now playing bar on beta three is definitely more readable in my opinion. And if you go to something like the files app, for example, and say we're gonna scroll a list of files you see at the top here, the title bar section is a little more translucent here than it is on beta three. There's like a grayish background behind here. So you could read the title bar a little clearer than maybe you can here. Although I don't find either of these to be too bad to my eye, but everyone's eye is different. So for this last comparison, pull down control center and you can see a much more of a dark background behind beta 3's files app than on beta 2, which itself was an improvement over beta 1. I actually don't like that too much, to be honest. Let's do this in Safari. And just for one more comparison point. Yeah, it really darkens the entire screen, whereas on beta 2 and the iPad mini, it will really get a more localized effect uh, from the control center swipe. So that's actually 
I kind of like it better on beta 2, to be honest, but, you know, I'll be filing feedback about it. There's still time for all this to change. That's really going to be about it for new worthwhile changes to mention in beta 3. I'm betting Apple is a little more focused on stability since it's often that developer beta 3 ends up being public beta 1. So they're getting ready for, for the public beta. They want to make sure this is more solid than it's been for the developers since they'll be opening it up to the public if they choose to participate. That's going to do it for this video. If there's more found, I will be updating the written version at slatepad.org. I will have the link in the description. Make sure to check that out if there are any new changes. With that, thank you for watching this video. Appreciate your time. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel on your way out, that would help me and the channel out a bunch. And I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.